But we have uh, Stephen Upstone, who's the CEO and founder of LoopMe. Um, you're not going to find many more experienced people in mobile marketing than Stephen. He was uh, managing director of Europe for Ad Infuse, leading up to its uh, acquisition by Velti. And he was then vice president of sales and business development there. Um, he founded LoopMe in 2011 and, uh, well, to, to great success. Um, some really important developments for, for this field. If you'd like to, uh, to kick us off. Thanks very much. Good afternoon, everyone. The last, the last few here for the last presentation. Um, so today I'm going to talk about brand app marketing, uh, and basically, and, and the power of video. And that's, in, in very, very simply, that's how games advertisers, in particular, are using now video ads to promote their promote their games more effectively, and not just to get an install, but also how they're considering using television advertising and more broadly brand marketing to uh, work across the whole lifestyle, uh, life cycle of, uh, of um, mobile app distribution, through from awareness through to uh, gaining greater LTV. So that's, that's the kind of topic. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit also about LoopMe and LoopMe's vision of uh, mobile advertising. So LoopMe is the largest mobile video DSP. And that means that we connect through to more sources of video for video advertising than any other, um, any other single source. And we do that across all formats. And I think that's important because if you just think about yourself, when you're using a video, uh, when you're using a, 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 a mobile or a tablet, you're, most of the time you're not actually watching video. So the pre-roll video format is important, but it's not the most important format. So we're actually working as a, as a business across all these video formats, and we have a very simple vision that actually uh, mobile video will actually become the most important video format, even more uh, ad format for digital, even more important than search. And to put that in perspective, search today uh, and all of online advertising is about, uh, it's not yet a $200 billion marketplace. Whereas actually when you look at brand television, it's already over $200 billion. So we, we envision that a lot of that spend that currently goes on brand TV is going to move through into mobile video, and that it won't just be on pre-roll, on YouTube, that all formats will turn into video. And, the, and there's a couple of important reasons behind this. One, that brand advertisers understand video. You know, people like Unilever, they don't understand if, if you show them a banner ad, is that going to help them sell bars of soap or not? So they understand brand video. It means that if they understand who has seen their video, then it's much easier for them to spend money against that. And the other, and, and that's perhaps more interesting for some of you guys as well, is that actually it works more effectively than other performance ads. So if I show a brand video against a static video, then it's going to be more effective. And that's something that we can, uh, I can show you some exact examples of later. So our vision is that mobile video ad formats uh, become the most important, become the most dominant and that they take over the other ad formats. And the reason this hasn't happened before now is mostly technology. So technically, we, we were not able to show video as easily on handsets. Bandwidth was restricted. Now, these video ads are preloaded over Wi-Fi. So even in countries like uh, the Philippines or in, in, in LATAM, uh, you can still get a great video experience into handsets today. Um, so we work very much on a global basis. Um, LoopMe is, uh, has offices in Europe, China, India, and also North America, providing um, the opportunity to get uh, either monetization on a global scale. We work with some very big partners there where we run mobile video ads inside Cheetah Mobile, for instance, which is the second biggest Android developer in the world, so much bigger than Twitter. And we, we are the only providers of native mobile video ads inside their apps today. And we are, allowed, we are accessing inventory globally. So you can either acquire users with us globally or you can monetize globally with us as well. So on to the topic of brand advertising. I guess one of the important developments from a gaming point of view that you'd have noticed is that um, video ads, when they first started on mobile phones, tended to just show the gameplay, which is very important because you, as a user, you want to you consider, I haven't actually experienced this game yet. So I want to be able to experience this game. That has now changed. The really big people, uh, King and Supercell and Machine Zone, you probably saw the, the um, 
Kate Upton ads here, they're now putting ads into the Super Bowl and they are creating ads that aren't showing gameplay. They're creating ads that, that build, if you like, an emotional connection with the user. Sometimes they're even using a little bit of humor and that they actually build the characters in the game. And this works all the way along the conversion funnel. So it starts off by creating great awareness, but it's also building equity, brand equity, within the actual characters, if you like, within the game, which then means that consumers aren't only more likely to download the app, they're more likely to use it, and they're more likely to spend in it, because they feel that, that there is more value, if you like, in that game. It's, it's, it's worth spending money on. This is the same kind of emotional connection that's been built by uh, you know, big brands in, in fashion for, for years who uh, convince uh, users that um, buying a, you know, a, a, a leather suitcase or a leather bag with, the sa with a branding on it is, is much more valuable, if you like, than uh, a, a, a brand that is not so well known or, or an unbranded um, game. And so that's, that's what game advertisers are starting to do now, or successful ones. And actually, it is trackable. So I know a lot of you would have worked just on the basis of a CPI, and will I be able to get some kind of return on the individual ads I serve? Well, um, actually, uh, much of the work from this uh, whole presentation comes from one of my advisors. We, we have an investment from a guy called Christian Sigistrel, who he, he founded Glue. Uh, then he founded Playfish, which sold to EA. Then he was the EVP of EA. So he ran big brand campaigns with EA, and then most recently he invested in and was um, uh, on the board of Supercell. And Christian wrote this blog piece, and this actually comes from his blog piece, which you can find on our website, loopme.com, where if you have a look at uh, standard advertising, a profitable UA on CPI only reaches a saturation point. It reaches a limit. And if you add to that um, TV advertising or brand advertising over the top of that, then that actually increases the amount of profit that you can, wait, you can make. And you can measure that. You can either do just advertising in a single geography, or you can do advertising on a locational basis within a single geography to find out whether or not that's working for you. I remember talking to the guys at Supercell when they broke China. A big part of them breaking China was using a local TV program, which was, <laughs> this probably won't make sense to you, but if any of you are English here, there's a big English soap opera called Coronation Street. It was a local equivalent of Coronation Street, and it was, it was that usage that kind of broke them through into the mass market. And so this is measurable gain. It's not measurable in last click measurable, but it's measurable in make a comparison over that month will you make more installs and higher LTV. So it is measurable, and the effects actually are perceived along the entire um, conversion funnel. So that conversion funnel uh, Christian describes in his uh, blog piece goes all the way from awareness through intent to conversion and an LTV growth and optimization. So I'll talk about a little bit of each of those uh, steps now. If you look at the first step is the kind of awareness, you don't have to be king or supercell to use brand advertising. You know, if, if, if you're making a video trailer or if you're making even a basic HTML ad, you can use the characters. You don't have to just show gameplay recorded. You can actually build, you've, you've built the graphics for the characters, you've, you've thought a lot about their personalities. You can bring that to life somehow in the advertising, whether or not that's on your YouTube channel, on your Wikia, on your Yoku, if, if, you're, if you're running in China, for instance, um, or in, in the case here on the left-hand side, those, those you saw there were actually some HTML5 ads that we built for King. So you don't have to have massive budgets to think about character and think about branding and not just about install. The next stage, if you like, along that process is interest, which as, as Christian calls it, I love this, I have to check this out. A lot of this is gonna be generated by word of mouth, also by your ratings within the App Store. Um, actually, again, LoopMe did some uh, work around this where we added social endorsement or social recommendation to the ad units. So we actually added in a rating, if you like, about a particular game, and then we saw, did that increase the conversion rate? And we found it did. So you can do creative experiments here. You can take your existing creative, you can overlay that with tweets or endorsements, and actually create higher conversion rates and a greater LTV as well. And that could just be in the place of normal advertising space. You could just add those, some of those endorsements. And many of you will use App Store ratings, but you could use individual social recommenders, or even uh, people who are trusted as well. 
And then you move across to the most important step, and that's the actual conversion point. Um, so there are two key conversions. Obviously, there's the actual install, and then after the install, uh, working through to uh, actually your first purchase and, and many purchases. And video, it's been seen, has a very clear impact not just on install, because you didn't just get them to put it on their app, you got them to open it, but also it has a clear impact on LTV. Um, I was talking with a couple of game developers today, and they regularly see around 40 to 50% higher lifetime value coming from video. Others I've heard of even higher uplift as well. Because you just can't convey conviction with a banner ad. You can't get that same kind of excitement. You know, when's the last time you ever heard someone say, oh, did you see that great banner ad last night? They're just they're instantly forgettable. It's just a way in which you can access the content. It's not really um, uh, a, a way of actually building uh, any conviction or emotional connection with the user. And um, when you look then at the power of video on driving conversion, this is data that you can see. These two lines here are taken from a very large utility app where we literally replaced Facebook-like ads, which are native static ads, with uh, video native ads. So they're preloaded native video ads. And you can see that we gained about 300% increase in conversion rate in immediately. So the red line at the bottom is the native static ads, the same ads to the same users at the same time, but the difference is one is static, native static, versus native video ads. And you can see that immediately we had 300% additional conversion rate. Actually, the click-through rate was only about 25% more, but people were completing the journey. They're actually going through, installing, and then playing the game. You can see a couple of other things in this slide as well. The other thing you can see is the launch of Agent Alice. I don't know if you know Agent Alice. It was launched by Wooga, quite a high-profile launch. On the bottom of the slide here, you have a small uplift here where on the native static ads, there was a, a small increase from running this new game launch. Whereas within the native video, there's a massive increase. And that's because something new, a new piece of news, wow, there's a new game, I've never seen it before, told with video is so much more engaging than, uh, uh, than, than a story that's told with a static ad. In fact, we, we've, we've, uh, uh, we're very close to Amazon in China. They sell about $300 million a year of mobile phones, about $200 each, and they track all of their referring traffic. And any journeys, any user journeys that start with a video experience are much, much more likely to convert. They're much higher value. So even in high ticket items like $200 purchases, if you start with a video, it gets you over that, that conviction point. It gets you to the point where you actually will buy something. And that's something we've seen with LTV, uh, from, from gaming, from video as well. The third thing you'll see here is, is the power of using data correctly. So LoopMe sees 30 billion pieces of data every day. We use machine learning to optimize our results. We turned on machine learning where you see the cogs there, and that doubled again the performance of the conversion rates by making sure the right ads are seen by the right people based on every single piece of data, not just on did you have this app on your handset, or have you done this sort of thing before, or which contact I'm in, but also on whether or not your location has been changing regularly, what your handset type is, what your connection speed is. All of those pieces are mined in real time, and that saw another doubling of the uh, effectiveness or the conversion rate. Um, so all of this talk about the importance of conversion, I thought I would uh, let the, the, the slightly more um, uh, amusing creators of, of South Park give their view, I don't know if many of you have seen this, on monetization and conversion from free in-app purchases. So this is a short clip from them. They see through the charade. Uh-oh, you think so? I think they see through the charade, yes. I'm pretty sure they can hear us, too. All right, f*** it. You've seen through the charade, so you might as well know everything. Charade up! Allow me to explain the science behind micro-pay freemium gaming. For years, the concept behind gaming was simple. You pay for the game and you enjoy. With mobile apps, we now have the ability to make games that are boring and stupid. But if you pay for incentives, you're rewarded. Freemium. The meum is Latin for not really. It's a simple cycle. A never-ending loop based on RPGs. Explore, collect, spend, improve. 
But whereas those just use the concept of XP or experience points, we've introduced the idea of micro-paying with money. Money, 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 money. It's what everyone is doing. Freemium games are what's now. And it's all just a lot of harmless fun. And so in conclusion, the successful freemium game is based on five principles. Entice the player with a simple game loop. Use lots of flashing chickings and compliments to make the player feel good about themselves. Train the players to spend your fake currency. Offer the players a way to spend real currency for your fake currency so they'll forget they're spending money. And make the game about waiting. But let the player pay not to wait. It's a surefire way to make lots of money. We understand micropaying, but can't the game hidden inside the charade it just at least be fun? No, no. It has to be just barely fun. If the game was too fun, then there would be no reason to micropay in order to make it more fun. What's this? Your checks, of course, for 10 million American dollars each. So this is... everyone is doing this? Everyone is doing it. It's just the way things are going. It's the way things are going. Well, I guess if everyone's just paying 40 cents at a time, it can't be that bad. <laughs> So some quite nice uh, humour there by South Park, but also an interesting point in it. All of those individual steps are throwing out data as well, and that data can all be used to go back into your marketing and to build a, uh, a, 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 a better experience. And you can also bring into that remarketing as well. Um, so a lot of you have probably seen many of the Supercell ads at various times, but... Um, imagine if you then started to personalize these ads with a Halloween promotion or a Chinese New Year promotion where there are free gems and you sent that to specific groups that you know are lapsed users but likely to spend a large amount of that uh, free gems currency to get, to, to, to get that, uh, that good feeling again. That can be done now because the world is much more linked up and is much more programmatic. So you can actually retarget using a strong video experience and then measure the uplift that you got off all of those users that you've reached again. So you don't have to just look for new users constantly, you can try and get more money out of your existing users. And this is, this is achieved using a DMP, or a, a segmentation tool, and this is some real data from our DMP, where you have a, a, a target group here called Mums with Kids, who are very strong for this particular pu puzzle game, and the interesting thing about this group is they are nearly 30% of the total file and they are three times more likely to convert, three times more valuable. So a large proportion of the value is created from an identifiable group of users. Whereas there are some other groups of users here who make up a uh, hundred times more value as well, but they're a much smaller group of, the, of, of users. Um, so the big, the big group are really the, the, uh, the, the core target audience. And the segmentation tool can allow you to reach them in the first place and also to retarget them again in the future. And this, I think, is the last and final step about how you are constantly looking to optimize the exposure from your brand advertising along with your direct response advertising. That strategy should be done using post-install uh, post data, should be flowing straight back into the system. And you should be using that data in real time to optimize. And um, however many PhDs or bright guys you've got in the, uh, in the company, using just segments and targeting segments is very limited. So you probably need to think about using some kind of machine learning so that you can uh, create uplift from every single piece of data that you receive and respond to real time changes. You know, if you have a, a, a really strong a hero featured in your advertising. In, in China, there's a lady called Fan Bing Bing who promotes some of the uh, games there from Le Dao, and I've probably pronounced both of those quite badly. If you, if you had her suddenly in a big piece of news, you might find that the conversion rate of her ads are improving in real time. Now, you need that to be discovered by machine learning and improve the results automatically rather than trying to then, a week later, realize you've missed the opportunity. So we do see that automation starts to become more and more important and big data becomes more important. And in the ad industry, this is actually something we call a move towards programmatic buying. So um, individual uh, agencies won't just be trading media in the same way they have done in the past. They will have much more open access to all the available media and they will be able to choose or pay for the slots that they, are, they find most interesting in real time either from direct publishers or using real-time bidding. 
So that, that is, the, uh, is kind of the, 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 the uh, overview of where we think the marketplace is moving to and some of the different techniques that uh, brand, advertisers, uh, brand advertising can use in uh, accessing games. I guess one last thought to leave you with. This has got a long, long way to go. Um, you know, mobile is now disrupting brand television advertising. And brand television advertising is a $200 billion marketplace today. So you have big companies like Unilever and Procter & Gamble spending over $5 billion a year just on brand TV ads. Now, if you look at this picture, it'll feel very familiar to you of a family here. Most people are actually second screening. They're looking at their phones or they're looking at their tablets and sometimes three devices during TV playing. Now, that means that if, that, if looking at that screen is worth $200 billion and, and fuels the businesses of, of car manufacturers and, and, uh, and huge um, CPG businesses, then if 10% less looking at that screen happens because of mobile, that's $20 billion of value that's killed straight away. So we think that this is going to really start to change rapidly. We think that there will be some very big clients on both the brand side and on the gaming side who will be spending a loan in one year, maybe $500 million or a billion dollars just on mobile video ads. Just mobile video, because the other ad formats just won't build branding in the same way, they won't convert in the same way, and that won't follow through to LTV. So it's not just a format thing to consider. It's not just, oh, there's a format, I can do a banner, I can do a video. This is where the whole market's moving to. In the end, we see a world that will just be video and search. So that's, uh, that's my thoughts for the day. Uh, I've got time for some questions, I hope, if, if we yeah, have any. Yeah, we've definitely got a few minutes. I was actually going to ask you, and um, you just think answered it, because you know, I, I cover this kind of thing all the time, and a lot was made about how much was spent by Machine Zone on their advert and by how much it cost to place an advert during the Super Bowl, but clearly that's kind of the start of it, right? So the, 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 the ad spend is going to move up and up and up from there, in your opinion. Absolutely. So many of these, although, okay, so... When you look at the games industry, you have a few big spenders who have driven most of the spend over the last couple of years. So people like uh, many of the guys like Mopub had 70% of their revenue at the time of purchase just coming from King. Um, and then it became just Supercell. And a lot of that was funded by one big hit game or a very large check from a venture capitalist uh, um, uh, soft bank in this case. So um, I think that in the games side, there will be some very big hits driven uh, hits, hits in the future as well. There will be even bigger hits, I, I, I believe, that will drive a lot of that. And that will drive much, much more towards TV, much, much more towards brand advertising as well. And then from the brand side as well, I, I'm, I'm the chairman of the Mobile Marketing Association, and we've done studies with people like Coca-Cola and Unilever, which says even today they should spend 20% of their budget on mobile advertising. And they don't understand anything apart from video. And that's today, so that's only going to get bigger. Um, so yeah, we see a future that becomes more and more digital. If you think many consumers don't even watch television anymore, you know, millennials are, are all accessing their television on their tablets, or they'll start to project that from their tablet using Apple TV onto the screen. So it's it's going to get disrupted very in a very very big way, and it's going a lot of it's going to centre around video and data. Absolutely. I mean, is there any questions from the audience at this point? Okay, we have uh, one over there, just there. Hi, Steve. Hi. Um, you mentioned China, and Southeast Asia um, has a similar issue there in terms of bandwidth and data plans. So I think everybody agrees video is booming everywhere. It's going to continue to boom, no question. How do you deal with it in low bandwidth networks mm -hmm. or in places where people don't have data plans? Yeah. They're mainly using prepaid cards, and they literally, if they're not on a Wi-Fi network, don't have the ability to watch a video or they don't want to spend on it because you know they're on very, very low cost data plans, which is a big part of the population in Southeast Asia and much of China. So yeah, we've, we've seen great success with video for the last two years. And two years ago, it was a lot worse than it was now using video. And you have to do a couple of things. You have to preload over Wi-Fi. So in places like the Philippines today and in Indonesia, we've seen really strong success with video. It's preloaded over Wi-Fi. You can sometimes change the second length of the ad, because even the Wi-Fi can be very slow in those markets. But you're then caching the video ready to be shown for maybe a day, or maybe you still want it to be fairly tied to campaigns. 
so it's usually only cached for a day or two, but that works phenomenally well. So um, always preload over Wi-Fi in other uh, tier one or Western markets, or, or uh, actually we also preload video over 3G and 4G because it's completely un unbundled and um, uh, consumers don't mind at all. So video is global and it is now. The only thing that holds it back is the technology of the provider that you're working with. And that sounds like something that, oh, most people should have cracked that by now, but they just haven't. So I think LoopMe is one of the few people who have managed to do that successfully. When you look at the very big companies, we worked with uh, Sunji or Go Launcher. I don't know, what's the local name for them in China? Go Launcher is their big product. They had been trying to, through GetJar and their acquisition there, they've been trying to build video for quite a long time. It's, it's, it's not impossible, it's just quite fiddly. A lot of things can go wrong. And so to have a good user experience that's preloaded, with the sound off, um, it does work today in Southeast Asia, but it does need the right kind of technology partner. Well, I'm afraid that that's all we do have time for in terms of questions. I'm sure Stephen would be more than happy to answer a few more afterwards. Um, in the meantime, round of applause, please, for Stephen. Thank you very much. Thank you.